I will take you on a walking tour of the main section of Bandelier National Monument, an historic site of ancestral Pueblo people located in New Mexico a short distance to the northwest of Santa Fe. The site is in Frijoles Canyon. Some prominent features of the Visitor Center, q and &E Pueblo, various cliff dwellings, and the Alcove House cliff dwelling. But first is a stop at the Frijoles Canyon Overlook. You get a good view of the canyon from this spot. The canyon was carved into the landscape by Frijoles Creek. The land around is part of the Pajarito Plateau, formed by two eruptions of the Jemez volcano more than a million years ago. The volcano deposited enough material to bury a 400 square mile area with volcanic ash to a depth of 1,000 feet in places. The compacted volcanic ash forms a relatively soft rock called tuff, spelled T-U-F-F. -F. It is easily eroded and winds up looking like Swiss cheese. Easily carved, it makes a great building material. The first stop is the visitor center. It has some neat dioramas which show what the q and &E Pueblo probably looked like. Note that there was only one entrance to the Pueblo. Rooms were constructed atop one another, and entrance to the rooms was through holes in the roofs. The walls were made of tough rock slabs, and rough beams were of pine logs. The logs were covered in small branches and then plastered with mud. A main loop trail takes you past the q &E Pueblo ruins and many cliff dwellings. Frijoles Creek provided a reliable source of water year-round. The principal crops grown by the ancestral Pueblo people were corn, beans, and squash. They also hunted deer, rabbits, other mammals, and birds. And they also utilized native plants for food and material. Yucca, for example, provided tough fibers for sandals and baskets and rope. The roots produced a soap, and the flowers could be eaten. Kivas were an important part of the ceremonial cycle and culture of the ancestral Pueblo people. A kiva was a center of the community, used for religious activities, education, and decision-making. This path takes you through the Kiwini Pueblo ruins. You can see cliff dwellings to the side. In this video clip, you can see the walls of the Pueblo ruins at the start. Note all the holes in the cliffs of tuff. You can see cliff dwellings at the base of the cliff, both constructed buildings and caves carved out of the rock face. Cuyuni Pueblo was one to two stories high. It contained about 400 rooms and may have housed about 100 people. Many of the rooms in the lower story were used for food storage. It was important to store several years of harvest to see the people through droughts or crop failures. Three kivas were located in the plaza of the Pueblo. Only one kiva has been excavated. The earliest evidence of dense settlements in Frijoles Canyon dates to the mid-1200s. Tree ring dating shows the construction of Kiwani began about 600 years ago. The cliff dwellings were occupied at the same time. Evidence suggests that the population of Frijoles Canyon reached a peak of maybe 500 people in the late 1400s. In this photo, you can see a reproduction of a typical cliff home. It was built in 1920, 100 years ago, but still very new compared to the original cliff dwellings. A good view of the q and &E Pueblo ruins. This series of cliff dwellings requires more steps than the cliff dwellings farther along the mesa. I climbed into this cave room called a cave eight. I took a photo looking out of it. It wasn't a very big room, perhaps just a place to sleep at night or use for storage. 
Here is that cliff dwelling constructed in 1920. It is referred to as Talus House because it is built in the rock debris, called Talus, at the base of the cliff. It's now believed that putting the doorway in the front of the structure was inaccurate. Most likely the inhabitants entered through a hole in the roof. By the mid-1500s, the people who lived in Kiwini Pueblo had moved away, settling in villages along the Rio Grande River. It was soon after that that the Spanish arrived and changed everything. Another view of the Kiwini Pueblo ruins. The cliffs are pockmarked with holes from erosion. This cave has been reconstructed. At this point, you have to decide whether to climb to the top of the mesa using the Fry Trail or continue along the path to view more cliff dwellings. I went for the cliff dwellings. This section of cliff dwellings is called Longhouse. Bandelier National Monument is named after Adolf Bandelier. He was born in Switzerland, but grew up in Illinois. He was a self-taught anthropologist and historian. Men from a nearby Pueblo led Bandelier to Frijoles Canyon in 1880, and he was hooked. He explored 166 archaeological sites in New Mexico, Arizona, and Mexico. He even wrote a novel in 1890 about Frijoles Canyon, The Delight Makers. In the early 1900s, Dr. Edgar Hewitt, a noted southwestern archaeologist, directed several excavations in Frijoles Canyon. It was he who promoted the establishment of Bandelier National Monument in 1916. At this point, the trail crosses Frijoles Creek to reach a nature trail. If you go to the left, you get back to the visitor center. If you take the trail to the right, you reach the alcove house cliff dwelling, which is the subject of my next video. Music